We now move from the physical body to the emotions, <laughs> the water, the second chakra, if you're familiar with the chakra system. The seat of our emotions. dimensions simultaneously. At the densest level is the physical dimension at the level of our physical body. The second dimension is the energy body or the electromagnetic body. It's a subtle dimension commonly referred to as chi or prana in Eastern holistic medicine. Chi is called the breath of God. I should say the breath of goddess because it is through chi or this energy body that the universal life force, the shakti, the energy, guides all movement in our bodies. It, uh, for example, conveys sensation through our nerves. It controls the movement of the in and out breath. It is understood that there's five different ways in which this energy moves. It also animates our emotions, thoughts, and subconscious, affecting not only their quality, but also the quantity. Quantity of quality and quantity of emotions we feel, thoughts we feel, the subconscious we feel. So it's a very, very powerful, subtle dimension, this chi. Our emotions, thoughts, and the subconscious are, they form the mental dimension, which is the third dimension. And then we have the wisdom body, which is the fourth, and then the bliss body. Anyways, during periods of uncertainty, we feel difficult emotions well up and subside, well up and subside in us. Emotions, in essence, are just pure energy that by themselves are not a problem. But when our mind interprets an experience that is unfolding, tries to make meaning out of what's unfolding, <laughs> measuring, our emotions tend to become vivid, colorful, intense. <laughs> so emotions are like water and our thoughts and habitual ways of thinking are like the palette. <laughs> which color our emotions. But when we drop the storyline and not identify with the emotions so strongly, but simply experience the energy, whatever it be, the shame, the bitterness, the joy, the happiness, the depression, the guilt, the sweetness, without judgment, without attaching labels, the emotion itself is immediate, sharp, raw, and it dissipates quickly. So we simply acknowledge the feeling and allow the energy to be felt in our breath, in our body, the bodily sensations, even in the non-verbal, non-verbal voicing of the emotion or the feeling. Because words <laughs> attach, they come with so much energy <laughs> and power. So the practice of the spiritual warrior, the second step that the spiritual warrior takes in his journey towards his own awakening is to simply be present to the emotions, the dynamic quality of the emotion. So in Buddhism, they talk about allowing the dynamic quality of the emotion to pierce our heart. So normally when we feel intense emotion, we kind of shield ourselves, but rather as a spiritual warrior, you do the opposite, you open your heart, <laughs> and let the emotions pierce you, wound you. When we get dirty with our emotions this way, we dissolve our resistance to life, we stop struggling with life, and this makes us resilient. Resilience is a quality of the crone. <laughs> it's a great feminine strength, resilience, that is yielding, soft, flexible, effortlessly giving way to the winds like tree branches in a storm 
<laughs> bending and moving with the dance of life. This is how we need to be with our emotions during liminal times. Tamsin and Akito were once traveling together down a muddy road. A heavy rain was falling. Coming around a bend, they met a lovely girl in a silk kimono, unable to cross the intersection. Come on, girl, said Tanzen at once. <laughs> Lifting her in his arms, he carried her, carried her over the mud. Ekido did not speak again until that night when they reached a lodge. Then he no longer could restrain himself. We monks don't go near females, he told Tanzen. Especially not young and lovely ones. It's dangerous. Why did you do that? To which Tanzen replied, I left the girl there. Are you still carrying her? <laughs> we will not explore water.
Thank mm-hmm. you. 